Hello everyone and welcome to a special little video. Today, what have I got for you? Well, I figured since it's, you know, a bit of a spooky time coming up in this when I'm I'm recording this in uh, September, but I it might come out later, I'm not sure. Um but I figured you know, I might as well uh, talk about some spooky stuff. So today I'm going to be ranking and reviewing all of the horror movies that I have seen so far this year. And currently, as I'm recording this, I've seen 45, which is a lot. So we're going to start right away. If you play with me, then I'll let you go to your party and I won't call mom. Okay, Joe. What game do you want to play? Ranked at dead, dead ass last is uh, 2023's All Fun and Games. And this is, uh, on the shorter side, it's uh, Asa Butterfield uh, from like Sex Education, Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things. Uh, they're both in it. thing about this movie is that it kind of sucked. <laughs> This is probably the worst movie I've watched so far this year. I did not enjoy it. The premise is like some curse, satanic thing, whatever. It's meant to be like this devil possession thing makes you play like childhood games, which in premise is interesting, but they don't execute it well. And uh, it's a boring slog of a film that does not do anything clever. And I don't think it's good. The acting, I thought, was kind of weird. Uh, normally, I think I like Asa Butterfield, but in this particular movie, he played the bad guy, kind of. Well, he played the bad guy, kind of, and he didn't do a good job, in my opinion. It was just kind of weird. Like, it seems like he was really trying to pull off something creepy, and it didn't work. There is something in that river. Okay, so now we have hashtag float from 2022. And here's the thing. I don't want to shit horribly on this movie because I can tell it had a low budget. It's like these uh, actors' first roles. Uh, I don't think the writer-director is all that experienced. So I feel kind of bad, but it is not a good movie. <laughs> I think that some of the cinematography is good. I think that some of the um, way the things are shot, the gore is good. I do like the performances. Um, I just, the main problem I had is that the plot was not good. And the characters, you, you know, like there's the trope of like the dumb horror movie characters. I don't think I've seen dumber characters in a movie as of late than this movie. They make some of the worst fucking decisions I've ever seen. And like the tone changes on a dime and it doesn't make sense. One of their friends dies right in front of this group of people. And afterwards, not two minutes later, they go, you know, I, I really think we should take this time to finally spread the ashes of our previously uh, made dead friend um, and have this really emotional moment that doesn't work because why it does why would it and also I don't know what the like I don't know what the point was it seems like there's a point trying to be made about wanting to be famous and kind of like this sacrifice that people will give to be famous but like that only creates conflict two times in this movie and they're not substantial really at all. And then the end shot is like, oh, look, she finally got famous. But does it matter? Fuck no. Ow. Next up, uh, second to last, we have Scary Movie from 2000. And like, Here's the thing. I understand that this is not the, the lots of people love this movie and I can understand why lots of people like this movie. I however 
didn't it's just not my type of humor like there's certainly some outdated stuff in there which i mean it came out in 2000 what can you expect um but ultimately there's just like a decent amount of like humor in this that i don't enjoy personally and so it didn't really hit for me uh it got maybe a couple of laughs out of me um the plot i already forget what happens in it other than the fact that one guy is uh gay in quotation marks so uh that that's it okay ramblers let's get rambling from dusk till dawn next up we have from dusk till dawn which came out in 1996 it's like that weird um quentin tarantino george clooney vampire movie i don't know if this is like a cult classic or not but i didn't like it very much there were parts of it that i liked for sure i think the vampire stuff is kind of fun eventually but really i don't like quentin tarantino like in this movie i did not think that he was good he was a weird little pervert that i did not like i just didn't like his character at all and the other characters were kind of forgettable as well and I don't know. It's it's an interesting one, but I just I didn't enjoy it. Are you looking for Reagan? Are you looking for Reagan? She burns in hell. All right. Next up, 2023's The Exorcist Believer. This was a flop, rightfully so. This movie was very much not good. I think that the child actors did a good job. I think that they uh, did what they could, but the movie itself, pretty damn boring. And really, I could just tell that the person who came up with this movie was like, we're bringing back The Exorcist, but like, what if two demons? And uh, it didn't work. It was a very boring movie. It was very repetitious. None of it felt new. The directing and cinematography felt not good. This was, this was a stinker for sure. I think there's something here that's not meant to be. Now, after that, we have another sequel movie, and that is The Nun 2 from 2023. I didn't like the first Nun movie, but I've seen all of the Conjureverse movies, so I felt obligated to watch The Nun 2, and it was slightly better. I liked it maybe a little bit more. I think that Covenant Nun horror movies have a tendency to not be great and that's nothing against like it as a concept it's just they, they they're usually not well executed and i felt that with this one it was not scary it was not very good plot wise really all i remember is like the last like the climax of the movie and that was probably the one time where i was like okay you're having some fun here and I'm having a little bit of fun, but I shouldn't have had to have waited until the climax for that to happen. You don't want to wake up, do you? Next up, I think people are going to not agree with me at all on this and that's okay but i have 2014's under the skin featuring scarlett johansson i understand why people like this movie but me personally i found it a grating experience to watch and i understand that i i think that was probably intentional but for me personally it was just annoying I didn't enjoy watching or listening to this movie. It has very long, boring segments that just I I was half asleep during. And then the audio is just like, we're going to play stuff at you that is genuinely going to like hurt your ears in some way. And it wasn't good. I did not enjoy it. I like certain aspects of this movie i like that it feels kind of creative in some sense of the matter um however i didn't like it scarlett johansson is fine in it i like the final i like the very end of it that was that was fun i guess there is something inside of me that's lethal Next up, this is my most recent watch. We have 2008's Teeth, 
I don't know what to say about this one. This one is interesting because the first half, especially, it kind of still has the vibe continuing forward, really feels like some fucked up Disney Channel original movie, but it's about sex and purity. And it really did not vibe with me in that sense. It just felt wrong. The acting, mm-hmm, whew, it was a thing that happened. Um, I kind of like the concept. I was disappointed because you can really tell that this was a movie written and directed by a man. And um, that kind of detracted from it. But it had its fun aspects. It's definitely... Um, Definitely a weird one, but I had my fun with it. The Velocipista. What? Dinosaurs. And right after that, we have the intentionally bad movie, The Velocipaster from 2018. It was weird. I didn't know how to feel about it because it did get some good, genuine laughs out of me. But at the same time, it felt weird. The vibes were kind of off. I couldn't tell if it was being like sexist and like orientalist in hopes of trying to turn that into comedy or not. But that's what that's why I, I just I wasn't I didn't vibe with it fully. I think it's a fun watch. I laughed quite a bit at this one, which is the goal. So thank good job. And the acting I thought was fun. But I don't know, it just had some weird vibes to it that I wasn't 100% sure on, which is why I didn't rate it higher. I think she's starting to suspect something. Who? Your wife. And then after that, we have Scary Movie 2 from 2001. And I thought the Scary Movie 2 was a huge step up uh, from Scary Movie. I still don't love the movie. I did enjoy it. I do like it. It still has some outdated humor. Um, it still has humor that I just don't personally enjoy. But I did think that overall, it was much better. It was it was just a more enjoyable experience. I liked the characters a little bit more. I liked the humor in it more. And uh, I didn't I didn't, I didn't like actively find myself disliking this one at points, whereas I did sometimes with Scary Movie. So, yeah. Deep in the sands of Mongolia lies a legendary treasure. I found an artifact. <laughs> but to unearth this fortune, you must get past the guards. All right, so this is a bonus movie because I put up a, toll, uh, a poll on Instagram uh, listing a few different movies that I could watch and I would include in this video. And this is the winner, and it is Mongolian Death Worm, which I believe is a TV movie from 2010. It's not a good movie, but I did have a lot of fun with it because it has such a good b-movie charm to it honestly the biggest letdown was the fact that the death worms themselves aren't really that interesting they're not that intimidating they don't like there's not like really any creative deaths that like i would have liked to have seen in a movie like this but i did think that it was a fun one and i have to say that mostly goes for the performances uh sean patrick flannery uh plays one of the main guys uh named daniel and he is also the protagonist, I guess, of Saw 3D. And I fucking loved his performance. I loved his character in this movie. Genuinely made this movie ten times better for me. He was having fun. And his character is just like this quippy fucking weird little guy sometimes that I really enjoy. I also like the main girl. Uh, I thought she did a good job. Uh, played by Victoria Pratt. I thought that she had a, a fun personality. She is kind of that stereotypical, like, I'm a strong, independent woman type, which is not a bad thing. I love that character type. But it is, like, a little bit generic, but I did like her banter with uh, with Sean's character, so I, I really enjoyed the dynamic between the two. And also, George Chung uh, plays a character named Timmer, and I really like Timmer. He's just badass. This was a fun movie. The plot's actually kind of fun but you know it it is what it is it's a it's a it's a tv b movie but it's it's an enjoyable watch it's fun (laughs) 
so recently I decided that I would watch the entire Hatchet franchise. And Hatchet 2 from 2010 comes up next. In my opinion, this is the worst in the franchise, but it's still an enjoyable movie. It's just kind of more boring because the action and the gore doesn't really happen until later. Um, for a slasher thriller, you kind of want to see that stuff start sooner because it can get a little bit bland. And really, I didn't enjoy the characters as much in this one. They were kind of more bland, not as life-filled, uh, so that their life could then be taken later. So I didn't always love this one, but I did still have a lot of fun with it. I always enjoy the gore in these, and I think that the action, when it starts doing more creative stuff, is fun. 26 rooms high. 26 rooms across. 17,576 rooms. And next we have Cube from 1997. This is this is that that movie that that uh, video game is based off of. I don't remember the name of the game, but either way, I think Cube is you know it's it's pretty good. I don't think it's a great movie, but I do think that overall. It's fun. The acting is a little over the top, a little weird, a little silly sometimes, but like mostly in a fun way. The gore when it's there is pretty great. I think the concept is fun. It's definitely hard to make interesting, so I applaud them for making it mostly interesting. It does get boring in some parts, but overall it's a good movie. I think the performances were good. I I there's a whole conversation I could have about uh how they represent like autism and uh, stuff like that, where it's like you you're only worthy if you're autistic and also uh, are like a genius in some way. So that's that's a really fun trope that's here that I don't love, but um, overall I, I do like it. I think it's fun. Okay, at the end my main grievance was that like one person didn't like didn't get killed on screen. I was like. That person deserved to die on screen, so I wish I could have seen that. I promise you, I am gonna get her back. You made a promise to a dinosaur. Yeah, why? And then after that, we have Jurassic World Dominion. Is this horror? No, but Dead Meat, the YouTube channel, counts the Jurassic uh, Park World movies as horror, so I decided to include it. Definitely, I think the worst Jurassic World movie because I don't think I really enjoyed the first two thirds of this movie. <laughs> it was boring. It was not very exciting. Uh, set up so many different plot threads that it's just like, all right, can we just can we just get to the fucking point, please? And then once we finally do get to the point, I start to enjoy it and I like the action and I like the interactions between the characters. The heavy nostalgia bait with this one, you're bringing back everyone. And I do like Alan Grant and uh, Ali Sa Ellie Sattler coming back. I like their characters here. Uh, Jeff, of course, Jeff Goldblum's Ian Malcolm is phenomenal. It's Jeff Goldblum. So I liked, I liked seeing them to some degree it did it was obvious nostalgia bait it did get me a little bit but i liked it when all of everyone like converged and it was a big group maybe too many people mm. but it was still i liked the banter i liked the interactions they had it was fun in that regard A gunner seat? And after that, we have another nostalgia bait movie, and that is Ghostbusters Afterlife. This one I did kind of enjoy. Again, not so much horror. I'd say this is more like PG 13 horror, if you want to consider it that. I mean, the standout is McKenna Grace's character. I also like Paul Rudd in this one. He's pretty okay, as well as the mother, who I don't remember uh, her name. But I, I thought that this was a decent return to form because it was more original it more did its own thing i did not enjoy the use of them uh bringing back i forget what his name is the actor who's died i did not enjoy that i thought that that was weird 
And they shouldn't have done that, and they didn't need to do it. But overall, I like some of the action set pieces. I honestly, the main problem I had with it is that there wasn't enough ghost busting. That just didn't really happen a whole lot in this movie, and I was sad about that. I don't want to hide from them anymore. What do we do? Are we not men? All right, after that, we have Arcadian from 2024 featuring... Yes, that's right. Nicolas Cage. Kind of. I mean, he, yeah, he's in it. This one is a weird one because I think the creature design is really fun. At some point, this movie does jump the shark and it does goofy ass shit, which I couldn't help but laugh at. And I don't know if that was the intention or not, because up until that point, it felt like a serious movie. And then like the tonal shift just was like jarring. And it was kind of didn't do a whole lot for me for a long bit. And it was like, okay, it was kind of a bland movie. But Nicolas Cage is here. So I have to love it some. But like I said, the creature design was my favorite part. There's a scene where he's like, the creature is like sticking like its arm through the door. And it's so fucking creepy i loved it so much and then it goes into bat shit critters uh stuff where they're fucking turning into a wheel and rolling after the kids and it's weird these are somebody's balls balls are not supposed to be hanging from trees that guy knows what's up all right next up the next hatchet movie hatchet 3 from 2013 once again i did enjoy hatchet 3 it wasn't my favorite but it was pretty good i'll tell you what though this is the one with probably the least enjoyable characters in terms of like the cast is like i don't give a shit about you victor corrali come over here and kill these people i don't care for the most part that's why i felt mary beth uh was kind of just there yeah military one the action again was fun. Uh, the kills and gore kind of need took some time to get ramping up to where I wanted it to be. But ultimately, I did really like the character Amanda and Caroline uh, Williams' portrayal of her. I thought that was my favorite character in the movie and what helped it stand out a little bit for me. So I, I like this one. You see that fence? Uh, yes. Stay on your side of it. I also wanted to get a bit of like a PG, PG-13 horror movie in here because I feel like they're important to the genre because they're, they kind of, they get to help introduce new generations to the genre and kind of see what it's capable of. So I watched Goosebumps from 2015 featuring Jack Black as R.L. Stein and also Dylan Millette. So that, that's his last name, right? D Minette, sorry. And also Amy Ryan. I like Amy Ryan a lot too. I thought that this was a perfectly fine movie. Um, I thought that the action was pretty enjoyable. I thought that the, the, like, the CG wasn't always great, but it was passable. And I like the plot. It's a little bit generic because, you know, it's a, it's a PG more movie. You've probably seen this type of plot before in like a Disney Channel movie or uh, I don't know, any, any teen movie you like that before i'm gonna be honest i love jack black i think his performance <laughs> i think he was a bit of a weird choice a weird pick for this i think he was kind of more cast to fit that slappy role because the rl stein role is like a little bit strange but i did really enjoy the banter uh that he had in this movie and i thought that like he did a good job still and uh I like this movie. It's a fun it's a fun one if you're interested in like some not as scary. Uh obviously doesn't have any gore. Um just like more tamed down horror. Ready. Slacks. Small price to pay for an awesome ass. Right after that, we have Slacks from 2020, and this is a horror comedy about killer pants. No, that's not a joke. I was expecting this to be really bad, and then it was, like, actually surprisingly enjoyable. I don't think it was perfect, but I did enjoy it, and honestly, I'm glad that it ended the way that it did. I won't say anything more than that. I was just, I, I liked how it ended because it felt fitting. I don't really have much more to say about this. I think the comedy was not always great, but it was pretty decent and I enjoyed it nonetheless. Austin's dead. Dude, I'm right here. Austin's alive. 
And then coming right up, we got Victor Crowley 2017. This is the fourth and final, as of right now, Hatchet movie. And I really like this one. It kind of returns back to form in a little bit uh, and that we got basically a new cast of characters. I enjoyed all of them. I thought they were good characters. The gore was fun. You can tell that the the budget kind of was lower on this one because they're kind of stuck to this one place. But I did actually enjoy it. I thought that it was kind of a fun little new take on it that harkened back to the original. As always, uh, Perry Shen does a good job. I like his character. Believe it or not, this was probably the second Hatchet movie besides the first where I was actually rooting for multiple survivors, which does not always happen. I was glad to see uh, multiple people make it out in this one and uh, maybe, maybe my favorites survived. Maybe they didn't. You'll never know. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Victor Crowley. Folks weren't too kind of Victor. So he stayed hidden in his daddy's house, out in the bayou. And then coming up right after that is the original Hatchet from 2006. I think the acting in this one is silly, it's goofy, but it's really enjoyable. I really just like the bayou, the swamp, the Victor Crowley of it all. It's just a good one. It's like, this one probably has the best kills, if I had to say. Um, just because there's... They kind of have their own special thing to them. And I, I liked, I liked again, the whole cast pretty much. And I was rooting for multiple survivors. So I enjoyed it. <laughs> Next up, I watched Soul Station from 2016. And this is an animated film. This is technically a prequel to Train to Busan, the live action zombie movie. I did like this movie. It was slow at points and I liked the the overall vibes of it. Um, I liked that it had a build up and I liked where like the, the political theming and I liked the characters. Uh, the voice acting was good. One of my main gripes was that I didn't always love the animation and like that's a personal thing that's not like the animation is bad because it's not. I could tell that it seemed like it was based off of 3D, maybe sometimes even flat out 3D, but like drawn over. I don't know how they did it, but sometimes it felt like weird and jittery and like animatronic in a way that like it's not meant to be, or at least I don't think it's meant to be. So it did distract me a few times, um, but I do think that overall it was well animated. It just wasn't to my personal taste really. And then there's a twist that I thought was actually really surprising and fun, and I was not expecting it. So I had a lot of fun. Hi, this is Mike. I was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available. Yes. The security guard. Then after that, we have Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, and I apologize to all you FNAF heads. I just didn't, I didn't love this movie. I thought that it was good and I really enjoyed it. Um, it needed more purple guy. That's, that's what really what I have to say. It needed more purple guy. I would have been happy, happier. Josh Hutchison does a good job. Piper Rubio, uh, AKA Abby does a good job. Matthew Lillard, phenomenal as always. And then Elizabeth Lale as Vanessa did a good job. It had some weird slow plot in the beginning, but I, I liked, I liked it once it got going. And, uh, honestly, I was kind of upset by some of the limitations of the animatronics. I wish they got to do more, but I still enjoyed it. I had my fun. It was well worth the watch. Did you knock him dead? Next up, we have Late Night with the Devil uh, featuring David Dusmelchin. I thought that this was a fun one. Had some controversy coming out because they used some AI images, which I don't approve of, higher artists. I get that the budget was probably low and that was their way of shortcutting things, but ultimately just hire artists to make shit. Okay, this is plain as simple as that. This was a fun little one. Uh, I think that the theming is really enjoyable. I think that David does a great job. I, I think like the devil of the name is uh, fun and I think that it has a nice build up. It's just not like the most exciting, thrilling horror movie, which I think is what it wanted to be, but it wasn't quite, but I enjoyed it. Let's play a real fucked up game.
Welcome to the pathway. Next up, we have Devour from 2005 featuring Supernatural's very own Jensen Ackles. God, this was such a bad movie. But boy, did I love it. Uh, this was one of those so bad it's good movies for me. And I'm really thankful for it because I had so much fun watching this. The plot is fucking ridiculous. If you like bad movies, if you like baby Jensen Ackles, I implore you to watch this one. It's just fun. You probably brought me all this way to kill me in the middle of the ocean. No one can hear you scream. No, I'm not going to kill you. Well, that is disappointing. Next up, we have Influencer from 2023. And I think that this is a, a fun one. It's a little bit slow. It's more of like a a slow kind of a uh, slow burn thriller i would say cassandra now does a really good job playing the main character who is the the villain she's the killer but i really liked her performance and i liked the other people's performances as well there was one guy the boyfriend who i think didn't do as good of a job i don't want to knock the dude all right i feel bad whenever i call out performances but like he kind of didn't feel as good to me um but overall fun movie i like the premise of like stalking these people and like taking over their lives and uh using social media to like show that like you people don't really care about you and like the i don't know it was it was a fun concept and i thought it was good and i liked the characters and the acting the four of us are here to prevent the apocalypse after that we have knock at the cabin from 2023 featuring dave bautista i think dave bautista is a great actor um i don't I, people don't agree with me on that all the time but i i do really like dave bautista and i thought that this movie was pretty good i had actually read the book before um and i liked the book and i liked the movie i don't think the movie was as good as the book the ending is different the ending is more enjoyable in terms of like a movie's perspective, I'll say. But I did like this one. I think everyone did a good job uh, playing their roles. And uh, I don't know, it was just like a good, like j solid acting showcase, in my opinion, that had some good uh, tension and uh, mystery behind it. I would have liked it more probably if I didn't know the actual mystery from the book. But, you know, it's whatever. All right, next one. You're going to hate me for this. You're really going to hate me for this. Uh, not not this specifically. You'll see in the future. But uh, next up is Goodnight Mommy, the original film from 2014. This is a German film originally. I thought that this was good. I did. I accidentally watched the American remake first. And I liked it more. Granted, bias be shown. This is a movie where like you're looking for a twist right and so if you know the twist is not going to be as good however i do genuinely kind of think that the remake did a better job of hiding the twist i thought that tw the twist was more impactful in the remake and i liked it a little bit more i still like this one i just didn't like it as much sadly and normally i am very against american remakes not very, but I'm against American remakes because they tend to just be lazy. But this good, good film, w watch it, watch it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, we have Ring 2 uh, from 1999. This is the original Japanese Ring 2, not, not any of the American uh ring movies i really liked the ring uh or ring ring just ring and ring 2 i liked a lot as well it wasn't as good it was a little bit slower the characters were not as like enjoyable to me but i did like the plot of it i always enjoy uh getting to see uh i can't remember her name the main girl the main the main mother uh i think she's great i really like to see like what they do about uh, her child in this one. And there's a new character, a reporter, uh, that becomes the main character, and I like her a lot as well. So this is a good one. Not as exciting, not as mysterious, but I do still enjoy it. You'll learn to love me someday.
after that, we have the 2022 American remake of Goodnight Mommy. I've already talked about it. I feel I feel so bad. I feel I genuinely I feel bad about watching this one first and liking it more. I think that the boys, the actors were really good. I think Naomi Watts does a really good job. It feels a little more heartfelt. I just I really I I was on board. I was on board with it. I was into the I was into it. I didn't know where it was going to go. I liked it. Sorry. I think something's going on with Esther. After that, we have Orphan First Kill from 2022. This is the sequel to The Orphan. Uh, great movie. This one's funny because they have adult Isabel Furman still playing Esther, who's meant to look like a child. Isabel Furman doesn't quite look like a child, so it creates some funny like moments where it's like, okay, the camera's not moving because we can't show below the waist but other i like genuinely isabel Furman is a fantastic actor i love her in these movies also the the like the plot twist in this one if, is still really good i like where it goes i like that it doesn't take too long to happen it just kind of gets into it at a point and then we get to see things play out and i enjoyed it i enjoyed all of it actually drink some of this michael don't. It's blood. Michael, Michael, Michael. Next up, we have The Lost Boys from 1987, the uh, the vampire movie. I thought that this one was a little bit weird. It definitely was of its time in that it's like an 80s movie for sure. But I do enjoy it a lot. There were just parts of it, like certain things that didn't get developed as much or were just kind of weird that I didn't enjoy that much. But I did really like this movie. I like the vampires and the soundtrack. Oh, fuck, dude. Cry Little Sister is a great song. Great f use in this movie. Just, it's a good one. Tell me what's going on. <sighs> After that, we have Split from 2017 featuring James McAvoy. I don't always love this like weird portrayal of dissociative identity disorder, but ultimately I love, I love James McAvoy's performance. He fucking kills it. He's just, he's just so good. And that's why I liked it. Also, Anya Taylor-Joy does a good job as well. I don't love how it portrays certain, like, uh, certain things, but ultimately the acting was phenomenal. Uh, the tension was good. The scares were good. So I still really liked it. <laughs> Next up, we have Battle Royale from 2000. This is uh, another Japanese movie. I am so upset because the only version of this that I could get my hands on was the American dubbed version. I implore you to find the sub version anywhere if you can. The dub version is not good. It genuinely detracted from the movie for me, and I feel bad about that because this movie deserves more. I really enjoyed the content of this movie. I enjoyed the premise. It's it's the namesake of a fucking genre. I thought the performances were really good. The dubbing was not. The dub was not good. Um, it felt like a bad anime dub. All of the characters I really enjoyed. I liked the plot a lot. Uh, I liked the like the action of it all. It was good. I really like Battle Royale. I just, please don't watch the dubbed version. The decision was made to terminate the experiment. Next up, we have Species from 1995. And this is, I guarantee you, the premise of this movie was some fucking guy, producer, executive, whatever, was like, can we make an, like an alien horror movie uh, but the but the but the alien is hot and has boobs. Can can we can we can we do that? I really like species. I think it's another one of those like kind of bad movies, but it's really fun. I think Natasha Henstridge does a good job playing the titular species, whatever, I don't know, the 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 alien. And also I have to stand with the fact Alfred Molina and Forrest Whitaker, Whit Whitaker are in this movie. And their two characters are my OTP. 
But also, there's a line where Forrest Whitaker's character walks in on a bloody, gruesome, terrible crime scene that's just, like, blood everywhere. And he's an empath, right? And he just goes, something bad has happened here. I have not laughed harder in a long time. Such an enjoyable, fun movie. It's not good, I don't think. But it's really enjoyable. I know. The 80s are almost over and I haven't even tried Coke yet. <laughs> I don't know. Next up, we have Totally Killer, the comedy horror slasher, whatever you want to call it, from 2023. Kiernan Shipka does a really fucking good job as the final girl. I think Olivia Holt does a good job as well. I think Troy Leanne Johnson does a really good job. I just, I think generally speaking, Everyone in this movie does a good job. I don't always love it as a slasher movie because it's kind of predictable. The deaths are kind of fun, but I do enjoy the plot. I enjoy the premise. It's like a time travel, uh, like back to the future movie, but horror slasher. And I like it. Um, the humor is fun. I really like the humor. It's uh, making fun of things and also making fun of the things that are making fun of things. So I like that aspect of it. The main problem I had was that the killer was just kind of boring. Uh, just kind of like not that visually interesting to me, but I did enjoy this one. Here, the punishment for any crime committed is death. Wait, what would you say? After that, we have Infinity Pool uh, featuring... Not featuring. Mia Goth is in it. It's Mia Goth. She's going to steal the camera a little bit. I thought this one was so fucking weird, but I really enjoyed it. There's some genuinely like fucked up stuff that goes on here. I think the, the premise, the idea of it is like terrifying. And I really, I, I just truly enjoyed it. Mia Goth isn't the only one that does a good job. Let me be clear. But Mia Goth does do a good job. And uh, I like this movie. It was fun. Yeah. Apple from the garden? Yeah, it was delicious. No, 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 no. Mustn't do that. Forbidden fruit. After that, we have Men, uh, an A24 movie from 2022. Main, uh, main character is Harper, played by Jesse Buckley. And then all of the men, basically, are played by Rory Kinnear. This one is weird. I have, I rate this one as highly as I do, because as much as the theming feels weird, once again, written and directed by a man, but the tension and the fucking, like, just the, like, just the hairs that stand up uh, on my back when I'm watching this, it's genuinely good. The tension is there. The, the, like, the scariness is there. The, like, unsettling vibes are there. Then the, the end is just batshit fucking crazy and has genuinely some of the fucking coolest weirdest uh visuals i've ever seen in a horror movie so i had to rate it higher thanksgiving is an institution here Next up, we have Eli Roth's Thanksgiving from 2023, and this is a slasher. Patrick Dempsey, McDreamy, and a bunch of other people are here. This is a genuinely enjoyable slasher. I think that the kills are really fucking good. I think, like, the, the mystery of who's behind it is pretty obvious, but ultimately, I do enjoy the plot. I enjoy, like, seeing who gets to live, who doesn't. I think the gore and the kills are really good. I think that the motivation behind things is interesting. So yeah, I enjoy this movie. There's some good red herrings. I didn't really fall for them, but they're enjoyable red herrings, so I liked it. I think that this is probably one of the best slashers to have come out recently, and I thought it was a good one. There's this guy that lives across the street, and he's always looking over here. Looking over here how? After that, we have Watcher from 2022 featuring Malka, Micah Monroe. I think she does a really good job. I like this movie because it is genuinely unsettling. Um, it is kind of one of those movies where it's like a woman is seeing things, having trouble with things, and then the men around her are kind of like, you're fucking crazy. But I, I liked that about it because they used that to the, its advantage in this movie. They used that premise and they kind of turned it a little bit. So it's like, here's what the actual 
fucking point of the movie is. You understand? It's not like a Conjuring movie or whatever, some basic movie like that where it's like, woman crazy, ha ha ha, nothing, nothing happens with that. This one is like, the woman is called crazy and you understand that she's not and you are there with her through thick and fucking thin and then at the end you're like, oh. I actually didn't know how this was going to end. I thought it could have ended one of two ways and it did go one of those ways. And I think I'm glad that it did. My other option I would have liked as well. I would have liked both, but I enjoyed this one. So there's no way for me to win, right? You need to stay hidden until dawn. <laughs> no, thank you. Good luck. Next up, we have Ready or Not from 2019. God damn it, Samara Weaving is so good. She is such an incredible scream queen. The rest of the like ensemble are really good. I liked especially Adam Brody's character and Annie McDowell's character. I thought they both did, uh, were kind of like my favorite characters uh, because they were more empathizers to certain things. This is just a fun one. It's just hide and seek, but killer. You have to survive somehow. Rich, fucked up family made a deal with the devil. Samara Weaving, just deal with it. But it's just a fun movie throughout. I like the gore. I don't have much more to say. It's, it's, it's just good. Don't make a wish. <laughs> wish master. Careful what you wish for. And now we have Wishmaster from 1997. And let me tell you, this movie fucked. At least I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought this was a very extremely fun movie. And the plot is just like this evil uh, djinn, uh, aka like a, a genie. Sorry, I had a massive uh, brain shutdown moment. Andrew Devoff, who plays the djinn, does a really good job. He's just like... He makes any scene better by being in it. He's just really fun. I heard that he would like drink milkshakes before filming so he could get his like iconic raspy like kind of phlegmy voice that I really thoroughly enjoyed. But also I enjoyed the the main the main girl, uh, Alexandra, played by Tammy Lauren. I think that she did a really good job and I thought that she was a very good final girl and i thought the plot went fun places the gore is really fun they do a lot of creative unique stuff in here that i thought was great i would cut the last two minutes just because i didn't feel it was necessary and it kind of just dis distracted from alexandra's uh like success um but overall i really thoroughly enjoyed this movie and i would recommend pretty much anyone watch it yesterday a patient in your care died brutally in front of you I need to find an explanation for what happened. Next up, we have 2022 Smile. And I I understand why people think that this is a generic horror movie. I can understand why people think that. Sosi Bacon, number one, phenomenal lead. Uh, I love her. She's so good. But I have to say that really, I just think about this movie sometimes. And that's why it's rated higher. The gore, the scares, if you avoided the trailers, the scares are pretty good. The ultimate, like, final monster, so fucking cool. I love seeing that shit. But ultimately, it's the themes of depression and trauma that really just, like, send it home for me. You know, horror is not not shy to doing taking on those themes. It's, it's actually fairly frequent. But I do think that Smile does it in an interesting way that I really enjoyed. This weapon will be called the Terminator. You're dead, honey. Next up, uh, maybe not considered a horror, but it's kind of a thriller and Dead Meat James did a kill count on it, so I'm including it. And that is the Terminator, the original from 1984. I have also watched T2, I did not include that. Weirdly enough, I like the Terminator more than Terminator 2, which doesn't seem to always be the case, but I think that really it's just, I like the vibes more. It's, it's more uh, thriller, more horror-esque. I just, I just kind of like it. I just like it more. I think that Arnold does a really good job playing this robotic android guy. Yes, they just, they, they just did a good job. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's classic. What more could I say? No one's forcing you to stay, but I really hope you do because 
Today is going to be a great day. After that, we have Speak No Evil from 2022, and this is the Danish original. Why they felt the need to make an American remake two fucking years later, I don't know. From what I've heard, the remake isn't that good. It has uh, James McAvoy. He's probably the main good thing about the movie, if I had to guess. This is not a happy horror movie. Not at all. This is a horror movie that is really all about making you feel bad. Um, and I liked it. I like these movies every once in a while. I really like the themes of like culturalism and um, just kind of like being a pathetic guy well one of the main characters uh bjorn uh played by martin berlan is a pathetic guy and that is what uh supplies so much of this movie with its plot patrick played by fedha van huet i don't know how you pronounce that is really good at being unsettling and i thought that this movie was really enjoyable definitely like i had a sinking like I just felt heavy after watching this, but it was it was in a good way because that was the intention. Right after that, we have another foreign film, When Evil Lurks from 2023. This is a Spanish film. Uh, I don't know if it's from Spain or if it's from another Spanish speaking country, um, but it is a Spanish film. I really liked this one. I like the idea of having like it's kind of, it's basically like a plague zombie movie where you can't kill the zombies you can't and there's so many other rules that you like have to follow it's like you can't use lights you can't use electricity you can't be scared of them you understand that's kind of fucked up i'll just say the characters pedro and himi uh did a really good job i really enjoyed their bond their relationship um, and I like seeing this movie play out because it really fucking evolves rapidly and hits the ground running and the gore is really good and it's some good scares, some genuinely creepy shit uh, that I really enjoy. I want to be loved from as many people as possible. But truth is, I'm not really a good person. Right after that, we have Mia Goth back on the list for Pearl from 2022. This is the prequel sequel uh, to uh, 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 X, which was another movie that I really enjoyed. Mia Goth kills it. I just really in enjoy her character, Pearl. I enjoy Pearl. Um, she's a sociopath, but the movie's really fun because you get to see her kind of devolve more and more. And it's really fun watching that descent and uh, just seeing all of the terrible shit that she does. I don't know what else to say. It's just a good one. Next up is Ring from 1998. This is the original Ring, the Japanese version. Honestly, this is a slower one. And the horror thriller aspects aren't that present. However, I originally rated this lower, but then I couldn't help. Like, this is just a movie that I think about frequently. And I love, I just, I fell in love with it. The vibes, just like this kind of like slow burn attitude of it. I like that this actually has a mystery and an intrigue to it. That Ring 2 kind of loses to some degree. But I thoroughly, thoroughly love this movie. Genuinely, this has become like just a vibe that I fuck with so hard that I think of all the time. And I love Ring. The blood brought me this far. I need more. After that, we have Hellraiser 1987, the original. Believe it or not, I've not seen this movie before, despite the Hellraiser franchise being one of my all-time favorite, like, just media properties to, like, admire from a distance. But I watched it for the first time, and I, I've i seen stuff like video essays and stuff on it, so I wasn't a, a noob to it. I knew what went on. But it's just so good. Uh, the plot is incredible. I really like just the themes of, like, death and I don't know, it's weird fucking relationships and uh being a little creep a little fucked up gremlin basically and the cenobites all-time movie creatures monsters whatever you want to call them all-time pinhead uh deep throat as 
she's known by the fans. B Butterball and my boy Chatterer. I love Chatterer so much. They're just all great designs. And uh, the, the plot is also incredibly fun and enticing. The ending is weird, but I like all of it. I like all of it. Such a morbid imagination. Bringing dead things to life. All right, now we're on my second favorite of the year so far, and that is stop motion from 2024. I understand that not everyone is going to agree with me on this. I, I know that. I know that for a fact. This is a weird ass fucking movie that felt like it was made specifically for me, Ryan. I fucking love this movie. It does so, it just does all of the stuff that I want. It's weird, it's fucked up, has some of the coolest visuals I've seen. It just has a mental, a person fucking losing their mind. It just does so much that I love and I couldn't help but fall in love with it when I watched it. It's just so creative. I don't think that everything is like done to perfection, but I do think that for me, this is an all timer. The main actress, Aisling Fran Fran Francosi, Francosi, I don't know how you pronounce it. She does a great job. I love that it mixes stop motion and horror which has done before have has been done before but i don't mean in that like oh the monster or a creature design or whatever is just be like stop motion is the medium that's being used it's straight up mixing reality like real life with stop motion and i love it to death one of my favorite movies this year and it like quickly rose the ranks just because of how cool it is for me personally i know this might sound crazy I don't want to alarm you. Do you remember a TV show we used to watch together? It was called... The Big of Eight? And then my favorite movie of the year, and horror movie of the year so far, is 2024's I Saw the TV Glow. Justice Smith fucking kills it. This is a drama movie, I would say first and foremost. The horror themes are there. They're not super present all the time, but just this is a beautiful film in so many ways. I love the plot. I love the queer themes. I love I love the lighting and the cinematography and the set design. I fell in love so hard. I knew I was going to like it because of Justice Smith and because of the queer themes, but ultimately I fucking love this movie. It be quickly became a five star film, uh, like one of my favorites of all time. I just, I, I, I could not praise it more. I know that this is not something that everyone's gonna like because it's weird and it's not very typical and the ending is very interesting. Um, which I, I love the ending, by the way, but not everyone's going to agree. I sobbed over this movie, and I fucking love it to pieces. Please watch it if you're interested at all. But yeah, that's uh, that's my really long video uh, about all of the horror movies I've seen so far. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see more stuff like this in the future, let me know. I'd be happy to. I hope you're having a happy, spooky month time whenever this comes out i don't know yet but thanks for watching i hope you're having a fantastic day and i'll see you in the next video goodbye